Hey friends, this is Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney, and in today's video, I am rounding up my absolute favorite patriotic DIYs I have ever done. So we'll kick it off with some dollar store DIYs, and then the final ones will be wood builds. So stay tuned for that. This first one is an American flag wood planter box. You could use it just as decor or you can throw in some flowers like I did here. And for the base of this, you're gonna need paint sticks. I got these two packs of 10 for a dollar each at Home Depot, so really inexpensive. First, I started by laying out the amount that I wanted for the front, and so I did six painters sticks down, and then I just used some Dollar Tree popsicle sticks to adhere them with some hot glue. Then I repeated that step for the back of my box, and then I did the same process, but with four sticks for the two sides of my box. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that the ruler part of your paint stick is on the inside so that you won't see it on the outside. Then so I could attach it together, I added some Dollar Tree little Jenga blocks to each piece. I made sure to glue it down with one of the sides flush, so then that way I could stick it to the other piece that I was going to hook it to. So there I just added some glue along each side. It took me a couple tries to get the hang of it. Once it was assembled, I painted the entire thing white and then I grabbed some painter's tape for my stripes. I'm using one inch painter's tape, but you could do whatever matches the look that you're going for. I taped it about three quarters of the way up and then I made sure to leave a section for the stars and I just went ahead and taped that off and then finished the rest of the stripes. I'm just using a little piece of painter's tape to make sure everything is equally spaced and then I just used some red Waverly chalk paint to paint my stripes. Once those stripes were painted, I removed the painter's tape and then once I got up to the section where I was going to paint it blue, I used the painter's tape and just moved it over to the red. So then that way I was just blocking it off so that the blue could be painted. So as I'm moving it, you'll see here, I just scooched it down on top of the red I just painted so that the blue line would be crisp as well. Then this color is called Ocean Waverly Chalk Paint, and I think that is the closest to flag blue. I use that in a lot of these DIYs. And then I created a star stencil on my Cricut. I just found an image on Google Images and cut this out. If you don't have a Cricut, you could easily do something similar, but with star stickers from Dollar Tree. Just peel off the actual stickers, and then you can peel off the sheet from the backing, and you will have a very similar look here. I just took some white acrylic paint, dabbed up and down, and had all of my stars on the one side. And then instead of trying to wrap around that stencil, I just did two different pieces, got it lined up, stuck it down, and did the same thing on the side. So it looked like the flag wrapped around the wood crate. It is very rustic. You could also stain it and do more of a really rustic flag look. There's a lot of different options, but with $1 painter sticks, the sky's the limit. The second project is this flag banner. I love how vintage this looks. I also like the rustic touches and also these cute little Americana tassels. So for this, I used some burlap I got on extreme clearance at Hobby Lobby. It was in their fall section, but you could also use Dollar Tree burlap or one of their DIY banners for this. So because I was working with a long piece of burlap, I had to cut my pieces out. I did them about six inches. I really just eyeballed it. Really, it depends on the space that you're hanging it in and how big you want it to be and how far down you want it to hang. So my first step was to take that ocean chalk paint that I used in the last project, you'll see this all over in this video, and I just took a foam brush and really lightly started rubbing it on to the burlap to color it. Now as you can see here, I got a little goopy there at first and there was kind of a little chunk of paint, so I decided to kind of tone down it how much paint was on the paintbrush and it worked a lot better. So you kind of want to dry brush it onto the burlap to get the color that you want. 
While I let those blue pieces dry, then it was time to make my red stripes. I just went through, did some vertical stripes with painter's tape and the same technique over the top with the red. The color I use is called Crimson from Waverly and all of this just came from Walmart. The last step once the blue dried was to add my star. Again, you could do this with stickers that you can get from the store. Stars are very common shapes. I just cut this out with my Cricut. This is just a shape that you can insert in design space and I cut out one piece. Because I was just doing it on the burlap, I decided to use just one stencil. You don't have to cut it out for each piece. I just peeled it off and put it back on and went through with just some white paint and did some up and down dabbing to get that star effect. Once everything had dried completely, then it was time to string it up. So I just took some jute twine from Dollar Tree, put a little bit of scotch tape on the end. I wrapped it around to create a faux needle and thread. And then I went through and threaded one striped, one star, etc., until everything was on the jute twine. My last few steps I did once I had it hung up where I wanted it, which in this case is on my kitchen peninsula, I looked at all the pieces to see if they were about the same length, and then I wanted to make it look a little bit more rustic, so I went through the bottom of the pieces of burlap and just pulled out some of the essentially pieces of jute twine so that the bottom looked a little bit old and frayed. It's an easy process and it really adds some character to the piece. I really like the look. It's super easy and cheap, especially if you've got some cheap burlap. Just takes a little bit of paint and you can really get that Americana look for super, super cheap. Up next are totally Dollar Tree farmhouse beads. And these look like something that you would see on Instagram and have to track down on Etsy. So I made these with Dollar Tree wood beads. You could obviously make these with other wood beads if you wanna color them yourself. But I wanted to show you that you could make them with just Dollar Trees. So I went through and sorted out all of the medium size beads. And then I also separated the blue and red beads from those medium sized ones, because obviously the blue and red for red, white, and blue don't have to be painted. Then I got as many as I needed, put them on a toothpick of colors that obviously weren't blue or red, and just took a little paintbrush and painted them white. Then to make my flag, I took three Dollar Tree little tumbling tower Jenga blocks and hot glued them together to create my flag that's gonna go on the end of this strand. So to create the flag, I painted the middle block white, the top and the bottom blocks red, and then I painted over the top of the red block on top with a little bit of that ocean blue to create the star area. And then I just went back through with a little brush and some white and made some dots to create the stars. Then I took my little flag outside and I drilled a hole directly through the top. Unfortunately, I didn't grab some footage of that, but I created a long piece that looked kind of like a needle and thread with just some scotch tape and jute twine so I could feed that through my flag. To create that tassel, I wrapped some jute twine around all four of my fingers about 50 times. Then I tied a piece of jute twine at the top to create kind of the base of your tassel. Then I cut some red, white, and blue ribbon, just some from some stuff I had on hand, looped it through the top. So then that way all of the pieces would be tied at the same spot. So I stacked them as you can see here, put them on top of my tassel, tied them in, and then after I trimmed the bottom so all of the tassels were hanging down, I took some jute twine and tied it around the top to give it that round top of a tassel that you're used to seeing. Then I strung on all of my beads as well as my tassel at the end to complete my string. These really fill out any vignettes that you're looking to do for patriotic decor really easily. 
They're very easy to put together and they are all Dollar Tree. I love putting tiered tray or little pedestal vignettes together for all seasons. And something that I found is a really great hack for signs is this little golf game that you can find in the kids section. It's all wood and if you're willing to flip it over, you can paint it and create some really cool designs. So I flipped this over and then painted one red and painted one blue. Then for the words, I cut out decals on my Cricut. However, you could definitely use the rub-on transfers that Dollar Tree has. They have come out with more and more each time I'm there. You could also hand letter on these signs, so there are a lot of different options. But it's that easy. I just stuck on this Land of the Free because of the Brave. And then I also did the Land of Liberty on the red sign. And these really are super cute to round out your display. If you're loving these projects, be sure to sign up for my email newsletter. I send tips, tricks, free cut files, videos, new blog posts, a ton of whiskey and wet content. And don't worry, I will not spam you, but this is the best way for me to get exclusive content right to your inbox. So if you're interested, head down to the description box and you can leave your email and I will be sure to send you some goodies. Now let's get back into the crafts. So speaking of displays, these really cute stars made out of clothespins are perfect for displays as well. So I started with some Dollar Tree clothespins and broke them apart, just took the spring out of the center, and then went through with some hot glue and glued the ends together so it looked like you pinched it open. Once those were all glued together, I arranged them in a star. You need five groupings to create your star. And once everything is all set, I secured it with hot glue. You could leave them just as is. I did some like this to basically be white or neutral within red, white, and blue. I also painted some red and blue. They look great on their own. You can also stack them with different colors. And these are really great for filler in vignette displays. And you could also use them on their own. When I get decorating for patriotic decor, I always need some stuff that fits the theme but isn't all red, white, and blue because it can get overwhelming. So for this star, I created it with just some jumbo popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree, laid out into a star, and then glued down, and then wrapped it with just some Dollar Tree jute twine, securing it as I went with some hot glue. I wrapped all the points of the star, and then I went through and wrapped the center. And it's a really great little peek out here in different setups where you've got the star so you know it's patriotic but it's not too much color. This is one of my favorite wreaths of all time that I have ever made and it is so easy to put together. It starts with a Dollar Tree wreath form that I painted white so it would blend in. And then I took some clothespins, clipped them to a box, painted some blue, spray painted some red and also white. Once those were all done, I brought them in the house and I started to clip them onto my wreath form. I did one on the inner part and then one on the outer part and alternated. So I clipped one on the middle two pieces and then one on the inner two pieces and continued that all the way around for red, white, and then the blue section of the flag. I added some Dollar Tree burlap to the wreath form so that I could hang it up. And then when it was hung up, I just took some hot glue and some white stars from their table scatter and glued them around the top. Like I said, it's so easy to put together, but so festive and fun. And this next one is an oldie but a goodie. This is part of the first set of Dollar Tree Patriotic DIYs I did here on my channel back in 2019. And these are made from these Dollar Tree milk jars. 
So step one is to paint all of them white. Then I took two of them and used painter's tape to paint some horizontal red stripes on there. Then I just added some star stickers. These came from a wall decal, but you could use star stickers that come from the teacher section, whatever works. Stuck them onto the remaining white jar and then painted over the top with some blue so that the white stars would show through. The last two steps were to distress the milk bottles and then add some jute twine at the top. I display these with some cute little real feel tulips from Amazon and these are so stinking easy to put together to look like a little flag display, but it is so impactful and so cute. I love decorating with these every year and you could also do this look with a variety of Dollar Tree items. You could also do these with mason jars. Really there's a ton of different ways that you could recreate this look. Up next are these fun little stand-up stars and these were made from this Dollar Tree star door hanger that they have almost every year. So I peeled these stars off of the burlap and I ended up using two hangers so that I could double up the stars so that they would be thicker and would stand up on their own. So one, I started with a white base and added red stripes. Another one I painted blue. And then I just painted some stars that I got from Michaels, some little wood cutouts, and I painted them white so I could put them on the star. My final step was to glue the bottom two points onto some tumbling tower blocks so that they would stand up straight to be in a display. They also go super well with the items I shared in previous projects. I love making over these Dollar Tree glass candles for various seasons and occasions because they've got so many different colors now. So I went and grabbed a red one and just added a decal from my Cricut that says Freedom. I used the font Amatic, so it looked similar to Ray Dunn, but with those projects before, like I said, you could use Dollar Tree transfers, you could use an oil-based Sharpie and write on the outside. There are a lot of different options, but these are great to customize because of the color of the wax. This next technique is super easy, but it gives you some really awesome results when it comes to candles. So this one is just a Dollar Tree pillar candle, but you could do this with any pillar candle that you have on hand. So what you're gonna do is grab a piece of your printer paper, as well as a piece of tissue paper. This is just regular Dollar Tree white tissue. I cut it down to a little bit smaller than the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and used four pieces of tape to tape it on so it could feed through the printer. Printer. Put it through the printer just like I would regular paper and it's going to print right on to the tissue paper. I printed out a snippet of America the Beautiful sheet music. I made sure it was the right size of my candle and then I took just the tissue paper, you can remove the paper, and wrapped that around my candle followed by a piece of parchment paper and then I grabbed a heat gun. I will link the heat gun I used from Michaels down below but I just went through section by section and heated it up and you're gonna know that it's the right temperature because you're starting to see the black ink a lot more prominently than before. Once it's done, you can peel it off from the parchment paper, let it completely cool, and then you've got a custom candle with a ton of different things that you could imprint into it. I've done this with photos, I've done this with quotes, different printables, so there are a ton of different options on how you could customize some candles for your decor. This also looks cute on top of the clothespin stars. I have three of them arranged here. 
Here is an awesome hack for the Dollar Tree bandanas. They have some sort of variation of flag bandanas each year. So I grab them always to figure out what to do with them. For this particular DIY, I wanted to make some pillows for my fireplace area. So when you lay down your bandanas, take the sides that you want to be out and actually put them on the inside because you're going to flip it. So as you're gluing, you've got your inside on the outside, if that makes sense. Then once you've glued all the way around the outside, leave yourself a little space and flip your pillow inside out. Then I'm putting in polyfill, but you can use an old pillow. You can use a pillow insert, whatever you have on hand to fill up my pillow. Then once it's full, I just took some hot glue, finished off the top section. And these are so easy to create. Just like the other projects, like I've said, they are quick and easy. These are super cheap as well. They'll give you a lot of power, a lot of drama, a lot of color in your decor without a lot of time, money, or effort. Last year, I needed something for above our toilet in our guest bathroom, and this flag was just the thing. So I ended up using some Dollar Tree poster board, these rectangle signs from Dollar Tree, you could use whatever that they have. And then I also grabbed some of these star wands because I knew they would make great shapes for this flag. So I laid out all four of my signs and traced them onto the poster board. I cut it out and then I glued them to the foam board. And then because all of the signs had holes, I just used some wood filler to fill that in and sanded it down to get it flat. Then the whole thing got a coat of white chalk paint and then it was time to do some painter's tape so I could get my clean lines. I painted off the top left quadrant so I could create the blue area. And to put the stars in that, I just deconstructed some of those little wands. You could use whatever you want for the stars. I just happened to use these. And then I painted the back of them with just some more white Waverly chalk paint because they had some words on them. Then once my blue section was dry, I went through and evenly spaced out my stripes for the flag, painted those red, and then peeled up those pieces of painter's tape. Now it's really starting to look like a flag. Then I arranged my large stars up in the corner, glued them down to where they needed to go. And then I also distressed the sign a little bit. Now you could easily do 50 stars up in the corner if you want this to be a traditional flag. This is a flag inspired sign. This particular sign is a flag inspired sign. So it's an Americana piece. I know there are a lot of things and rules and stipulations that come along with creating flags and so some of mine are made to look like a traditional american flag other ones are just flag inspired like this sign that has the six stars instead of the 50. this was the perfect size to go up above on those shelves in our bathroom it is a really affordable way to get some additional height in a space get some more oomph, and it was pretty easy to put together. These star blocks actually were inspired by some Easter blocks that I had made with bunnies, so I decided to do the same with stars. Now you're gonna need three square signs from Dollar Tree. These just happen to be the signs that were there last year when I created this. You just wanna make sure that you can fit the stars from this hanging sign onto it. I gave each sign a coat of white paint and then I painted the back of each star. You could leave the front and do the glitter route if you want. I just wanted more of a matte finish. Then I took some burlap that I had from Hobby Lobby and I cut squares so that they would fit over the top of these different signs. Before I glued them down, I peeled some of the edges like we did with that banner earlier in the video, just so then the edges were kind of frayed and a little bit distressed. 
Then I hot glued those down to the blocks and then I followed with some hot glue and my painted stars. When you glue on your stars, make sure that you know which one is the bottom because if you glue it directly in the center, then you're not gonna be able to sit it up correctly. You want your bottom two points to be flush with the bottom of the sign. These are another piece that add a really quick touch of patriotic decor for a very affordable and very quick process. Number 15 is another wreath. This one is another one of those flag inspired wreaths. And this is made with a Dollar Tree wreath form, some of their mesh in red, white, and blue, as well as some more of those little star wands for the shape. So to create this look, I went through on my wreath form and I started with some of these pipe cleaners. These I had in my stash from Christmas, but usually they've got pipe cleaners at Dollar Tree for the holidays that they sell the mesh as well. Now to start this process, I pinched the end of the blue mesh and I hooked it to my wreath form with the pipe cleaner. After that piece is hooked on, then I just started pushing it through each of the three loops. So push a little bit out the top loop, the middle loop, and the bottom loop, and then hold it and then push it out the top again. So basically you're just letting it push, kind of fluff out each of the three pieces, and then you can push it over to the side as you go. So go up each three of the holes, then push it over. And you really only need to hook it as you go each of the sections rather than doing it each time. And that's what will give you kind of that bubble wreath effect. I ended up going through one section and doing just the blue in one section. And then I took the little pipe cleaner and I wrapped it around to hook the blue on. Now I used that same pipe cleaner and some red mesh to start up the process again. So I hooked the end to that same spot and then started by taking the red mesh up the innermost rung the middle rung and the outside rung so that I had the same look but with red then I did white then I did red again and then white and that got me all the way around to the edge Once my wreath was done, I went through and fluffed everything, trimmed the excess of the pipe cleaners, and then I hung it up so I knew kind of where I needed to put my stars. I just took some hot glue and stuck them to the blue section of the wreath. These colors and the way that it's laid out also give me vibes for the Texas flag. I do not live in Texas. I live in Illinois, so this does not match our flag. But if you do live in Texas, this is also something that if you wanted a Texas themed wreath, you could adapt this very easily and have that as well. All right, everybody, we are heading into project 16. If you are still here, leave an American flag in the comments. I love to know who sticks with me through these marathon videos. These signs you could recreate with any square sign that you get from Dollar Tree. You could get these from Dollar General, really anywhere. You just need a sign that is square. For these, I had to break it apart. So I just popped off the front and the back of the sign. And depending on what look you're going for, you can paint your frame, you can paint the back of the sign, just get it ready to add some vinyl. And then for these particular ones, I purchased this Abraham Lincoln one and I just cut it out on my Cricut with the SVG, stuck it to the sign and the same thing with this America sign. Once everything was stuck to the sign, I put it back together and just popped it back in. Now we're in the home stretch and I wanted to share some of my favorite wood builds as well in this compilation video because some of these are my favorite seasonal things I've ever made. 
The first one being this wood framed sign. This started with just a wood panel board that I ended up painting to create a sign and then I framed the entire thing out. This whole project is its own video so I will link that up in the iCards and down below for you so you can check that out if you would like to recreate this. The next one are these porch firecrackers. These I made with leftover fence posts from when Alex redid our fence in the backyard. It is all similar colors and patterns and techniques that I've used in this entire video, just doing it on some wood four by fours. So again, I will link that video for you as well. In that same vein, for some more porch decor, I created this flag stand-up sign. This is very similar to the other projects before, and it adds some nice drama and some patriotism to your front porch. And finally, number 20 is this ruled notebook piece of paper, and it has the Pledge of Allegiance on it. Again, this is another one that I've got an individual video on, so I will link that down below so you can check that out and dig into that if you're interested in wood builds. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments your favorite project. Also, let me know when do you put out your patriotic decor or do you decorate with patriotic decor? I know I have some friends that do not watch from the US, but I have gotten messages from people in Canada that have recreated these, but with a Canadian flair. So also let me know if you are updating it that way. I'd love to see your guys' projects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.